and um, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting all day for this moment, and uh, yeah, actually I have, very much so. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind us all that um, we have our devotions, like right now, um, every night at 7 o'clock, exactly where you are right now with Facebook. And on Sunday morning worship, um, it's now on YouTube at 10 o'clock, and it's very easy to do. Just go to our website, godamong.us, and click on the word YouTube, and it'll take you right to where you need to be. It's very, very simple um, and should work out really, really well, and I'm looking forward to worship tomorrow. Am I nervous? Of course I am. I'm nervous now. And then every day at 2 o'clock on Zoom, you're using Zoom, we have a check-in, and um, I think Pastor Luther has given us all the instructions on how to do that. Um, please join us. It's it's a lot of fun. We just check in with each other, see how we're all doing and how we're coping during this time. Um, and uh, I really enjoy it. That's kind of the center of my day. So, like everybody's asking, how are you doing? How are you doing? From my calculations, which are never really worth anything, but I think we're in week six of our social isolation um, but honestly, frankly, I have no idea um, how long it's been anymore. My sense of time, whether it's a day, a week, or a month, now is totally out of whack. Um, and um, my next question is, oh, by the way, I threw a treat for my dog because I have to distract him at this time. Um, what have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about yourself after six weeks of social isolation or whatever we're calling it, or hopefully you have somebody to be with. Um, I pray that we've all taken time to reflect on how we now live. Um, what do we think about? Um, it's different now. And how do we see and use resources like water, electricity, um, or gasoline, or anything like that? And think about how important friends and family um, and our pets are to our emotional well-being. What are some of the things that you notice now that you didn't notice six weeks ago or um, didn't? you might have taken them for granted? I don't know. I have very intentionally begun to think about all the things I have learned that I don't really need. And the things, frankly, I can do without and still be very happy. Um, most of those things are physical things. Uh, they're pretty obvious things like that. If I see something that hasn't moved in about a year, I don't need it. However, one thing has really changed in my thinking is that I've, I've really kind of thrown away any long-term plans. Um, I can dream if I want, and I'm good at that, but plans have now been reduced to dreams. Um, now, times and situations seem to change so fast, I can't really even intellectually or emotionally adapt fast enough. I mean, every day it's something new. Plus, these change in ha changes happen so fast that I've begun to just kind of let go of those plans because, again, I have no control over the changes that seem to happen every single day. Um, right now, I feel that I can only make plans maybe three days in advance, but that's, that's it, and that's my new reality. Now, yeah, like everybody else, I've had a lot of plans, but right now, after this experience, I've kind of cast all of them away. Little by little, my perspective um, has changed at one time, during this time, I was afraid, and I was afraid for many, many reasons. I mainly felt afraid because um, mine and yours and the global uh, reality seem to have changed. And our lives and our routines have changed without us asking for that to happen. Um, even our thoughts about the future um, have changed. And those of us with children, or especially kids like my kids are in college, we're always thinking about their future. Um, my heart really goes out to my two boys right now because we don't even know what our future really looks like. And sometimes if we think about the future too much, I'm finding it's kind of that thinking is rather meaningless. So 
as many times in the past that I've done when I'm stressed out, I'm about to take a test or I have deadlines and all that kind of stuff, I take out my old faithful um, Bible text. And uh, that's, of course, Matthew 6, a um, place to go to find comfort. But when I read it this morning, I read it through these new eyes that have grown after six weeks of social isolation. And the text wasn't as comforting as it used to be, because now I'm looking at it through new eyes. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or what about your body? What will you wear? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God... So close the, the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, Ah, what will, we, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Hmm. Living with the threat of COVID-19 has given me a new perspective, and the text, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Um... Uh, troubles of today, uh, those are enough for today. As if our concerns and worries about today's reality isn't enough. Now, now I'm told tomorrow will bring worries of their own. What worries can they be? Uh, um, am I a control freak? Well, maybe. But show me a high school student or a parent of a high school student who isn't concerned about their future, college plans, work plans, student loans, etc. And what about those people who have already lost their jobs and their health insurance during this pandemic? Many of them with families to support. And also think about the retired people who are depending upon their investments, especially as they watch the stock market fluctuate all over the place. Well, the point is the obvious. We're living in a new era, era, and like everyone is saying, whoa, we're all in this together, which I'm not really sure if all that's comforting. The virus doesn't care about our bank accounts or the economy. We live in a new era. Bless you, that's my dog. With a tiny virus we can't see, our society and even the global society has changed. But one thing has not changed, and that is the Word of God. The promise of salvation given to us through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the reality of the body of Christ. Think about this, the body of Christ. We see the body of Christ. We're part of the body of the Christ, and it's real. The good news for me is that I'm part of this wonderful faith community. A community that cares for each other. Plus, our church gives so much comfort to so many people nearby and also around the world. The hands and voices that have cared, comforted, fed um, so many people over the years, those hands belong to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit works through all of us, making us a church, a body of Christ, and this is real. And this Holy Spirit makes us who we are and makes our work happen. So sometimes, yeah, I do feel alone, but that's, when I think about it as a faith-driven person, that's not my reality. 
I'm not alone. I am surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. I'm surrounded by other people of faith. I'm surrounded by other people who feel the same way as I do when we long to worship together, to praise together, to be together and share. The truth is that we now, again, live in a new time and we don't really know what this future will look like, look like or how humanity is going to adapt to this new reality. And the church, the church will have to adapt to this new situation in life as it has throughout centuries. Church isn't a new thing. I have a new life that is not focused on the future so much anymore. If anything, my, this experience has opened my eyes and ears to the beauties, the beauty of the, of the flowers and the birds, you know, the ones that God has supplied with all their needs and are more beautiful than Solomon, those ones. I see and experience beauty, wonder, and awe in so many new and simple ways. These gifts I probably took for granted just six weeks ago. But now... I intentionally open up my doors so, so that the fragrance of the flowers blow through my house. And when Brewski and I go out for a walk at night, I really notice the clouds and I notice the stars and I notice the moon and I even notice where the planets are. And, and, I, and um, when I listen to music now, which I love music, but I, I listen for each individual instrument. And I imagine that that um, uh, musician who's worked so hard at learning to play their instrument or the words that are being sung and the word, the, the ideas that the composer is trying to communicate. I listen and I see, I taste everything much more intently. And I try to be aware of everything that's going on around me and look at it as a gift and not worry because worry is just wasted energy. My thoughts now turn to prayers much more often um, prayers filled with gratitude for the wonder of all creation and God's faithfulness and so my favorite verse for today um, is devote yourselves to prayer keeping alert in it with thanksgiving Colossians 4 2 devote yourselves to prayer keeping alert in it with thanksgiving Keeping that in my head gives me comfort Comfort as the world around me seems to change. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to worry. But rather, revel. Revel in the good news that God is faithful and steadfast at this time. Especially now. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God. All around us, there is suffering, and there is also some healing. There's also some discovery being made. Lord, I ask that you send your spirit of mercy and compassion and strength and vision upon this, your world, and all those who are caring for other people in so many different ways. Lord God, with all the things that are changing around us, don't let those changes um, be a cause for fear um, or to cause us to be alarmed because we are a faith-driven people, which means, which means that we long to hear your word and we know that your word is true, your word is real, your word gives life, it forgives, it creates, and your word is trusting. Lord God, you are faithful. Again, focus our hearts and our minds, and we look forward to the day when we will worship together in our sanctuary. But until that time, keep us safe and be with our loved ones close by and far away. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So there you go. Um, my life has changed. I'm sure yours has too. Um, but be at peace, and if you need to talk, you have Deacon Mindy, Pastor Luther, or myself. Um, let us know if somebody's in, in specific um, troubles. Please let us know so that we can minister them in any way we can. And for those of you who are calling each other and, and taking good care of each other, I thank you for that. 
Um, there's some of us that can't get out, and I thank you so much for caring for each other because that's what a community of faith does. So peace be with you, and uh, I'll see you on screen tomorrow morning. Good night.